Nope. Hello, dear listener, and thank you for joining me in this week's video. With Cinco de Mayo at the end of this week, I figured what better time than now to delve into Mexico's spooky lore. Narrowing it down to five was tough, since Mexico is jam-packed with a vibrant history that includes several cases of the macabre. Without any further ado, I present to you five haunted areas in Mexico. Number one, the island of dolls. This isolated land along the shores of Lake Xochimilco in Mexico City is believed to be one of the most haunted spots in Mexico. Discolored and ragged dolls hang from the branches of the island's trees, many missing limbs and even heads. Don Julian Santana lived in the area for more than 50 years and began collecting the dolls to fend off evil spirits after he found the drowned body of a young girl in the lake. Following Santana's death in 2001, the island became a major tourist attraction, with some visitors claiming to have seen the dolls move or talk. Number 2 the Palace of Inquisition. This iconic building is also home to some of the city's most beautiful examples of the Spanish colonial architecture. But behind that beauty is a dark secret. A sidewall around the corner of the main entrance will guide you to a small window. Above that window is a simple crucifix and a message. Ventana de la Dunancia. Here, in this tranquil setting, heretics would be denounced and led inside to meet their fate. Why, you wonder? Well, it's because this building was the torture palace of the Spanish Inquisition. The Inquisition's principal purpose was to defend and protect deemed threats to the Catholic Church, including blasphemy witchcraft, and heresy. Once a confession was signed, the victim was sentenced to death in a public setting. One of the largest groups targeted by the Inquisition in Cartagena were supposed witches. However, the persecution of witches amounted to little more than the vilification of certain women, certain women who, unfortunately, had little to no chance of redemption and were often found guilty. It is said that over 800 trials of witchcraft took place in the Palace of Inquisition, and of all of those trials, none were found innocent. Number 3. Posada del Sol in Mexico City Rumors have swirled for years about this abandoned hotel in Mexico City. What we know for sure is that this formerly splendid building was the personal project of the business leader, Fernando Saldana Galvan. Historians dispute the popular version of events, but according to local legend, Saldana Galvan hung himself in the hotel courtyard after his debt became unbearable. One of the underground chambers of the hotel is believed to be haunted by the ghost of a young girl who was also found dead inside the building. In current day, the site is not open to the public, but those who have ventured into the hotel often claim to hear and see signs of the little girl, and will often leave gifts of candy at the altar in order to avoid her curse. Number 4 Claudia Mihango's home. One of the most disturbing ghost stories in the country is the tale of Claudia Mihangos, who murdered her three children in the central city of Querétaro in 1989 and claimed to have been possessed by a demon. To this day, neighbors who are close enough to the scene of the grisly crime claim to hear children screaming in the middle of the night. And if that wasn't bad enough, many have claimed to see a bleeding boy 
standing in the second floor window of the home. Number 5. La Moira House La Moira is well known for being Mexico's most haunted house. The ominous yet intriguing looking house standing in the San Miguel Chipotepec area of Mexico City is painted completely black, which is fitting to the disturbing local legends surrounding it. The story that most would be familiar with is that of a young boy named Marcus. It is told that Marcus entered the abandoned La Moira house at the age of 8 years old. It was then that he witnessed and experienced something that would traumatize him for the remainder of his life. Marcus supposedly heard strange, unexplainable voices emanating throughout the house, and upon entering one of the upstairs bedrooms, saw the apparition of a man who had been hanged from the ceiling. Scared, Marcus fled the house only to develop an obsession towards what he had seen. This trauma dominated Marcus's thoughts for many years, until 10 years later, he returned to La Moira house. He entered the same bedroom he had witnessed the apparition, and proceeded to hang himself. While it's not known what drove Marcus to insanity and why he returned to La Moira, some speculate it was curiosity that coaxed him back and that he was then possessed by a dark entity, which lured him to commit suicide himself. Others believe he had witnessed his own fate as a child and returned to fulfill his own death prophecy. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this week's special video. If you did, you know what to do. Smack that like button, subscribe, notifications, share it with a friend. Guys, I included one of these stories because it freaked me out and gave me chills. And that one specifically is the Posada del Sol story. Mainly because back in 2014, I wrote a story about a Mexican urban legend that was very similar about uh, the spirit of a young girl who gets appeased by putting candy by her altar or her depiction. But the thing is, I completely made that story up based on just a mural I saw when I went to Mexico with family. So, I'm a little freaked out that the coincidence seemed to line up so nicely. But anyway, with that said, if you want to listen to that story, I'm going to put the remastered version up on the screen right now. Check it out. To everybody celebrating Cinco de Mayo this weekend, remember to stay safe. Remember to drink some water between your tequila shots and margaritas. And that way, we all win. With that said, everybody, remember to stay safe out there. I'll be seeing you in the next video.